Hi, welcome back. And so I've been thinking a lot of different things that have to do with meditation lately. And this is due to the fact that April 30th, World Healing Day is coming up. And if anybody um, is, is not really familiar with meditation or how to do it and wants to do it, or maybe is having a hard time with it. Um, I, I want to go through things other gurus have to say about it or, or spiritual people. And, and uh, one of them that I ran across who has an awful lot to say about it is Osho. And so these are excerpts from his book on what is meditation. And um, I guess, first of all, I'm going to start with uh, my personal conception of meditation. And, you know, at the core of me, I, I, I know what that is. And I think maybe everybody can find that core of themselves if they just kind of take a look back at a time where they're feeling really at peace with things and um, one of the times that I had was when I was very little I think I don't know I was maybe five or six years old and I had climbed a tree and was sitting up there and this walking stick came by and I just I just thought that was just the most fascinating thing you know and, and so that was a meditation on the walking stick that I'd never seen before and it was a very joyous moment for me so um, when I think of meditation it is things like that it is things like oh doing <clears throat> doing a painting and and really kind of losing myself in it and uh, it can be kind of kind of hard to explain but it's it's um, getting outside of myself and it has nothing to do with with my ego or any kind of attempt to do anything really it is it is being just right there in the moment and really appreciating the moment um, so that's my idea of meditation, and um, that's just just uh, one of the thing, a couple of the things. So, you know, I would I would say if if you're having a little bit of trouble with kind of trying to figure out what it is, you know, maybe you could take yourself back and think about some real great moment um, you had back as a child or even even something that happened recently where you just feel a oneness and, and it's very much in the moment. And now we'll go on to what the expert Osho has to say about this. His first one is uh, meditation is alertness. <clears throat> and in this he says, whatsoever you do, do it with deep alertness. Then even small things become sacred. Then cooking or cleaning become sacred. They become worship. It is not a question of what you are doing. The question is how you are doing it. You can clean the floor like a robot, a mechanical thing. You have to clean it, so you clean it. Then you miss something beautiful. Then you waste those moments only cleaning the floor. Cleaning the floor could have been a great experience. You missed it. The floor cleaned, but something that could have happened within you has not happened. If you are aware, not only the floor, but you would have felt a deep cleansing. 
clean the floor full of awareness luminous with awareness work or sit or walk but one thing has to be a continuous thread make more and more moments of your life luminous with awareness let the candle of awareness burn in each moment in each act the cumulative effect is what enlightenment is the cumulative effect all the moments together all small candles together become a great source of light of light and so with what he had to say here about meditation as alertness I am I am hoping that, that um, this is something that we can bring into the World Healing Day too as um, all small candles together become a great source of light and I'll move on to the next one which is meditation is your nature <clears throat> What is meditation? It is a technique that is it a technique that can be practiced? Is it an effort that you have to do? Is it something which the mind can achieve? It is not. All the mind can do cannot be meditation. It is something beyond the mind. The mind is absolutely helpless there. The mind cannot penetrate meditation. Where mind ends, meditation begins. This has to be remembered because in our life, whatsoever we do, we do through the mind. Whatsoever we achieve, we achieve through the mind. And then when we turn inwards, we again start thinking in terms of techniques, methods, doings because the whole life's experience shows us that everything can be done by the mind yes except meditation everything can be done by the mind everything is done by the mind except meditation because meditation is not an achievement it is already the case it is your nature it has not to be achieved it has not only to be recognized it has only to be remembered it is there waiting for you just to just turning in and it is available you have been carrying it always and always meditation is your intrinsic nature it is you it is your being it has nothing to do with your doings you cannot have it and you cannot have it it cannot be possessed it is not a thing it is you it is your being next one is meditation is non-doing <clears throat> when people come to me they ask how to meditate and I tell them there is no need to ask how to meditate just ask how to remain unoccupied meditation happens spontaneously just ask how to remain unoccupied that's all that's the whole trick of meditation how to remain unoccupied then you cannot do anything the meditation will flower when you are not doing anything the energy moves towards the center it settles down towards the center when you are doing something the energy moves out doing is a way of moving out non-doing is a way of moving in occupation is an escape you can read the Bible, you can make it an occupation. There is no difference between religious occupation and secular occupation. All occupations are occupations, and they help you cling outside your being. They are excuses to remain 
outside. Man is ignorant and blind. He wants to remain ignorant and blind because to come inwards looks like entering a chaos. And it is so inside you have created a chaos. You have to encounter it and go through it. Courage is needed. Courage to be oneself and courage to move inwards. I have not come across a greater courage than that the courage to be meditative. But people who are engaged outside with worldly things or non-worldly things, but occupied all the same, they think, and they have created a rumor around it. They have their own philosophers. They say that if you are an introvert, you are somehow morbid, something is wrong with you, and they are in the majority. If you meditate, if you sit silently, they will joke about you. What are you doing? Gazing at your navel? What are you doing? Opening your third eye? Where are you going? Are you morbid? Because what is there to do inside? There is nothing inside. Inside doesn't exist for the majority of people, only the outside exists. And just the opposite is the case. Only inside is real. Outside is nothing but a dream. But they call introverts morbid. They call meditators morbid. In the West, they think that the East is a little morbid. What is the point of sitting alone and looking inwards? What are you going to get there? There is nothing. David Hume, one of the great British philosophers, tried once because he was studying the option at Upanishads and they go on saying, go in, go in, go in. That is their only message, so he tried it. He closed his eyes one day, a totally secular man, very logical, empirical, but not meditative at all. He closed his eyes and he said, it is so boring. It is boredom to look in. Thoughts move, sometimes a few emotions, and then they go on racing in the mind and you go on looking at them, what is the point of it? It is useless, it has no utility. And this is the understanding of many people. Hume's standpoint is the, the, that of the majority. What are you going to get inside? There is darkness, thoughts floating here and there. What will you do? What will come of it? If Hume had waited a little longer, and that is difficult for such people. If he had been a little more patient, by and by, thought disappears, emotions subside. But if he had, but if it had happened to him, he would have said, that is even worse because emptiness comes. At least first there were thoughts, something to be occupied with to look at, to think about. Now even thoughts have disappeared, only emptiness. What do you do with emptiness? It is absolutely useless. But if he had waited a little more, then darkness also disappears. It is just like when you've come back from a hot sun and you enter a house. Everything looks dark because your eyes need a little attunement. They are fixed on the hot sun outside. Comparatively, your house looks dark. You cannot see. You feel as if it is night. But you wait, you sit, you rest in a chair, and after a few seconds your eyes get attuned. Now it is not dark. A little more light. You rest for an hour and everything is light. There is no darkness at all. If Hume had, won, had waited a little longer, then darkness also disappears. Because you have lived in the hot sun outside for many lives, your eyes have become fixed. 
they lost flexibility, they need tuning. When one comes inside a house, it takes a little while, a little time, a little patient. Don't be in a hurry. In haste, nobody can come to know himself. It is very deep awaiting. Infinite patience is needed. By and by, darkness disappears. There comes a light with no source. There is no flame in it. No lamp is burning. No sun is there. A light. Just like it is morning, the night has disappeared and the sun has not risen. Or in the evening, the twilight, when the sun has set and night has not yet descended. That's why Hindus call their prayer time Sandhya. Sandhya means twilight, light without any source. When you move inwards, you will come to the light without any source. In that light, for the first time, you start understanding yourself, who you are, because you are that light. You are that twilight, that Sandhya, that pure clarity, that perception where the observer and the observed disappear and only light remains. And the next one is meditation is a witnessing. Meditation starts by being separate from the mind by being a witness. That is the only way of separating yourself from anything. If you are looking at the light, naturally, one thing is certain. You are not the light. You are the one who is looking at it. If you are watching the flowers, one thing is certain. You are not the flower. You are the watcher. Watching is the key of meditation. Watch your mind. Don't do anything. No repetition of mantra. No repetition of the name of God. Just whatever. What? Just watch whatever the mind is doing. Don't disturb it. Don't prevent it. Don't repress it. Don't do anything at all on your part. You just be the watcher, and the miracle of watching is meditation. As you watch, slowly mind becomes empty of thoughts, but you are not falling asleep. You are becoming more alert, more aware. As the mind becomes completely empty, your whole energy becomes a flame of awakening. This flame is the result of meditation. So. You can say, meditation is another name of watching, witnessing, observing, without any judgment, without any evaluation. Just by watching, you immediately get out of, immediately get out of the mind. Whatever Marishi, Marihish Yogi, and other people like him are doing is good, but they are calling something meditation which is not. That's where they are leading people astray. If they had remained sincere and authentic and told people that this will give you mental health, physical health, and a more relaxed life, a more peaceful existence, it would have been right. But they were calling it transcendental meditation. They have raised a very trivial thing to an ultimate significance which it cannot fulfill. People have been in transcendental meditation for years and in the East for thousands of years, but that has not become their self-knowing and that has not made them Gautam Buddhas. If you want to understand exactly what meditation is, Gautam Buddha is the first man to come to its right exact definition, that is, witnessing.
and I find it very interesting that he said that too about transcendental meditation and um, what I can tell you that I have witnessed about transcendental meditation as a practice is that I'm old enough that I heard it, heard of it in the 60s and that now it is making quite a comeback. I'm seeing quite a bit more of it like on the internet. I had heard quite a bit about it when I was young and um, what, what I'm seeing now is that it's uh, become it's become pretty much a bragging right a product it is it is something that that shows that that you have money power prestige you can buy yourself a mantra for a thousand bucks and practice practice this this uh, what I would call a ritual And, and that that will make you an, an enlightened person that, that you have bought yourself a mantra for a thousand dollars a word and so if this is something that you would like to learn I can tell you how to learn transcendental meditation and you can send you can send um, me a thousand bucks for the whole for the whole program and that'll include more than just one mantra um, so this is this is something that I could also tell you how to do if you want to do that you can contact me but I'm just gonna go on with the next things that Osho has to say about meditation and the next one is called meditation is a jump can never go beyond the mind if you go on using it you have to take a jump and meditation means that jump that's why meditation is an illogical irrational it cannot be made logical it cannot be reduced to reason you have to experience it if you experience it only then do you know so try this don't think about it try try to be a witness to your own thoughts sit down relaxed close your eyes let your thoughts run just like pictures run on a screen see them look at them make them your objects one thought arises look at it deeply don't think about it just look at it if you begin to think about it then you are not a witness you have fallen into a trap okay I'm gonna do a little interjection here because you probably noticed this with my videos is that I have <laughs> quite a few pictures that you can run through your mind and so this is this is the thing about these pictures I'm I'm, I'm trying to show you how to um, how to begin to visualize so that when you close your eyes you can come up with your own pictures and do your own meditations and I fully realize you know that these are um, I don't know these are these are things objects to meditate on you can become what is in the screen and and I think we're getting close here to um, you know the true meditation that we want to get to so I'm I'm trying to take people with these videos from from a place where they m may not know anything about meditation um, through this through the transitory process of, of the videos that I make you can start to um, picture this in your own mind's eye as to uh, 
shapes and forms that, 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 that disappear like, like thoughts appear and disappear as the colors and forms appear and disappear in waves on the screen. So that is my objective um, in, in getting the mind to move from maybe going 150 miles an hour to uh, for you to be able to transition from that and move into uh, meditation a little bit more easily, okay? So now I'm going to go back to <clears throat> reading the rest of what Osho has to say about meditation as a jump. There is a horn outside, a thought arises, some car is passing, a dog barks and something happens. Don't think about it, just look at that thought. That thought has arisen, taken form. Now it is before you, soon it will pass. Another thought will replace it. Go on looking at this thought process, even for a single moment. If you are capable of looking at this thought process without thinking about it, you will have gained something in witnessing, and you will have known something in the witnessing. This is a taste, a different taste than thinking, totally different. But one has to experiment with it. Religion and science are poles apart, but one thing, they are similar and their emphasis is the same. Science depends on experiment and religion also. Only philosophy depends just on thinking. Religion and science both depend on experiment. Science on objects, religion on subjectivity. Science depends on experimenting with other things than you, and religion depends on experimenting directly with you. It is difficult because in science the experimenter is there, the experiment is there, and the object there to be experimented upon is there. There are three things, the object, the subject, and the experiment. In religion, you are all th three simultaneously. You are the experiment upon yourself. You are the subject, and you are the object, and you are the lab. Don't go on thinking. Begin, start somewhere to experiment. Then you will have a direct feeling of what thinking is and what witnessing is, and then will you come to know that you cannot do both simultaneously just as you cannot sit and run simultaneously if you run then you cannot sit then you are not sitting and if you are sitting then you cannot run but sitting is not a function of the legs running is a function of the legs rather sitting is non-function of the legs when the legs are functioning, then you are not sitting. Sitting is a non-function of the legs. Running is a function. The same with the mind. Thinking is a function of the mind. Witnessing is a non-function of the mind. When the mind is non-functioning, then you have witnessing. Then you have the awareness. And meditation is an experiment. The big aha. You don't believe in God. That is not a hindrance to meditation. You don't believe in soul. That is not a hindrance in meditation. You don't believe at all. That is not an obstacle. You can meditate because meditation simply says how to go within words. Whether there is a soul or not does not matter whether there is a god or not does not matter one thing is certain that you are who are you to enter into it is meditation to go deeper into your own being maybe it is just momentary maybe you are not eternal maybe death finishes everything we don't make any condition that you have to believe we say only that you have to experiment. Just try. One day it happens, your thoughts are not there, and suddenly when thoughts disappear, the body and you are separate because thoughts are the bridge. 
through thoughts you are joined with the body it is the link suddenly the link disappears you are there the body is there and there is infinite abyss between the two then you know that the body will die but you cannot die then it is not something like a dogma it is not a creed it is an experience self-evident on that day death disappears on that day doubt disappears because now you are not always having to defend yourself nobody can destroy you you are indestructible then trust arises overflows and to be in trust is to be in ecstasy to be in trust is to be in god to be in trust is to be fulfilled so i don't say cultivate trust i say experiment with meditation and the next one osho writes is meditation is silence